Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Ezekiel 10 and 11. Now, when I woke up this morning, it was pitch black. The sea was heaving. You can see that over my shoulder. The wind is blowing. This is one of those famous Cape storms. The rain is beating up against my house. You can see a police car going past right now and they're looking for you know, trouble on the roads. This is a terrible Cape storm. And I woke up remembering Julius Caesar, actually, and Macbeth. Remember, Shakespeare was brilliant in speaking about storms. When Macbeth and his wife committed that horrific crime, it's set in the context of a storm. When the, the rulers were coming against Julius Caesar, beware the Ides of March. Remember all that? It was set in the context of a storm. And so as we look at the fate of Jerusalem, this is a tremendous backdrop for me to be speaking about this. Anyway, get, let's get to Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel 10, Ezekiel looks up and he sees the throne now blue like lapis lazuli, which is a, which is a stone, a shining blue stone. And he sees the man clothed in linen and he's given this instruction, go amongst the wheels. Remember the wheels under the cherubim, the cherubim were holding up the throne. We saw that chapters earlier. And take some coals, scatter them over Israel. And the scattering of coals over Israel is speaking about judgment, impending judgment over Israel. And then he sees the glory of God again. This is Ezekiel in his dream. And he hears the sound of the wings of the cherubim as of God's about to speak. He looks a little closer and he sees not only are the wheels intersecting and he calls them whirling wheels because you know, there's life there. It says the spirit of them was in the, the, the wheels. But he sees eyes over the wings of the cherubim. Remember the cherubim holding up the throne of God, the, uh, holding up the glory of God. And, and so, so these cherubim look like an ox and an eagle and a, a man. The, these angelic beings, eyes all over, signifying that nothing escapes the notice of God. God sees everything in your life, in secret, in your thought life. He sees absolutely everything. Everything that was going on in Israel. And then... What happens is the cherubim rose upward and the glory of the Lord departed, moved over to the temple and stopped outside the gate. And the spirit of God lifted Ezekiel up to go and see what they were seeing, to go and see what's going on in Jerusalem. And that takes us to Ezekiel chapter 11. So now what he sees is those 25 guys. Remember those 25 guys who were bowing down and worshiping the sun? That's what he's looking at. And this is how they described as plotting evil. They were saying, listen, we built our houses. Uh, crazy for them to build their houses in Jerusalem. Remember Je Jeremiah had said to the exiles, you build your houses in Babylon because you're going to be there for 70 years. But judgment was coming to Jerusalem. Anyway, these guys have built their houses and they said, look, nothing's going to happen. In fact, this is the prophecy that they give. They say to the people that they're misleading the king and the people. And they say, Jerusalem's like a pot. We the choice pieces in the pot in fact the inference is all the rubbish pieces have been thrown off to babylon we god's chosen now that couldn't have been further from the truth if they had listened to jeremiah the previous prophet he said he described figs he says rotten figs are being left behind and the edible ones are being taken away and so these uh, evil leaders were were misleading the king and and God says this, I'm going to drive you out. Prophesy. He says to Ezekiel, now prophesy over those men. I'm going to drive you out. The sword that you're fearing is going to come against you. I'm going to drive you out because you have adopted the practices of the people around you. There's not just some mindless, vengeful act. No, no, God is saying that you are, are worshipping Baals. You're sacrificing your children. You're behaving like the pagans. And I'm going to hand you over to that way of living. Now, as Ezekiel was prophesying this, one of their leaders, Pelitia, dies, falls over and dies. And Ezekiel gets mortified. He says, no, surely, Lord, you, you're not going to you, you, you get rid of the remnant. And, uh, you know, then God brings this beautiful promise. He says, yet for a little while, you are going to have a sanctuary in a foreign land. But this is what the sovereign Lord says. This is verse 17. I will gather you back from the nations. I will bring you back to the land of Israel again. Now, we know that happened after the 70 years in, in Babylon. 
But this is also speaking into the future. I believe this is speaking right before the very end of the age. Because it says this, I will give them an undivided heart, speaking of his people. I will put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them a heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. I know of a couple who had separated and the Lord gave the wife this promise. I'm going to give your husband, I'm going to take his heart of stone and I'm going to give him a heart of flesh. And I, I witnessed that miracle of that man softening towards his wife. So this is clearly speaking about Israel. It also speaks about you and me receiving the the working of God, the dealing of God in our heart. It says, they will be my people and I will be their God. And, and so I, I believe this, while this speaks of Israel, it speaks of you and me, and it speaks of an end time renewal.